no time to waste. I'm here to announce to somebody, God will not waste time with you. God will do a quick work in your life. And the same, in the same vein, God will not waste time with the enemy that is against you. He will not waste time to greet you of your enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you that are watching online, God bless you. And I'm so sure before the end of the service, we will take time to appreciate you. Kindly take time, share the broadcast with your friends. You, uh, your friends uh, might not be my friends. So share on your social medias, on YouTube, I mean on Facebook, and maybe any other place where you can send the link. And uh, for those of you that will be online, kindly comment. That's the only way we can, we can be uh, assured of your participatory in the service. So share, let us know also where you're watching us from. And uh, of course, let me see you interact with the broadcast as often as you can. Is that okay? Is that okay? We began a topic by, by the name or rather titled No Time to West. And uh, we saw a few things from that teaching. And one of the things that we say, God desires promptness when it comes to his children. God desires your quickness, if there's a word like that. God desires you to be quick with them. He desires you not to delay every time he causes you to move. He desires swift action when he prompts you. And we said the reason many people are not prompt, they are not quick with God is because number one, they are torn in between two opinions. And that we saw in the book of First Kings 18 21, amplified or rather message Bible translation we are, I'm just doing a recap so you can just post the scriptures as I say them. Uh, in Amplified and also Message, 1 Kings 18.21, that speaks about why are you hesitating between two opinions? Why do you jump between two opinions? Elijah approached all the people and said, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? God doesn't want you to be in that position whereby you are still thinking whether to obey or not to obey. Whereby you are thinking whether to pray or not to pray. Whether to read the Bible or not to read the Bible. Whether to give or not to give. Whether to fast or not to fast. Don't begin you are here when you are torn in between. That one never leads you to no place. And we also say that Satan is moving very swiftly in our days. He is so quick to gather together. He knows he doesn't have time. So he is trying all he can to ensure he harvest as many as he can. Who will burn with him to hell? That's why as a church, as Christians, as individuals, we need to arise and also be quick to salvage the souls that are being targeted by the devil. Are we speaking here? So, how quick, how quick are you to obey God, to go on evangelism? Listen to me. As a child of God, the greatest reward that you have from God will come from how many souls were saved from you. After you got saved, how many other people got saved? Either directly or indirectly. There are people that have never spoken to one single soul. Brother, sister, be born again. But in heaven, they have a bank full of souls that they have won to Christ. Their money did the work. Their sweat did the work. So when you say, oh, I don't know how to speak, I don't know how to... No, 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 you are lying. The avenues are plenty for you to win souls. If you can't go, then let someone go on your behalf. Are we together? There are people that have never held a microphone behind any pulpit. 
But in heaven, they are preached all their lives. Why? They are the reason why the gospel is being projected with ease. Because they have given to the good cause. Are we flowing together? I didn't say begin to give so that you don't go on soul winning. Are we together? I'm talking about someone is so held up, so not able to, even if they are work, you, at least you have somebody you can win a soul. And I was telling Mamlea yesterday, winning a soul is not encouragement. When you talk to a brother or sister in Christ, you are, they are not your souls. Souls is you picked a drunkard that never knew Christ. You nurtured them. You discipled them until they accepted Christ. So don't go and talk with your neighbor and say, ah, I, Pastor, I preached. I, I won a soul. No, you didn't win a soul. You encouraged somebody to come back to church. Are we together? So how quick are you in winning souls? Because Satan is moving very swift to harvest men. So we need to up our pace in obeying God. Tell your neighbor, up your pace. Up your pace in responding to the word of God. Ask, yourself, ask someone else, how swift are you with the word of God? Ask them boldly, how quick are you with the word of God? Because so many people begin to bind the devil when God speaks to them. <laughs> you are in church and God tells you, Minister David, please close your account, give it to church. Devil, I bind you. Devil of lack, devil of poverty, I bind you. How can this devil, and imagine they come and tell pastor, pastor, can you imagine the devil was telling me to empty my account and give to church? Which devil loves the church that much? Which devil loves the church that much? Many of you have bind the devil, God, the voice of God so many times. You get into your pocket, it's time to give your offerings. And because you know you put hundred on this pocket and thousands on the other side, you pulled mistakenly the thousand to give as an offering. I bind you, I bind you, go back, go back to sender. Then you pull up your 100. Continue. Success in your journey. How swift are you with the word of God? How quickly do you obey the word of God? And also, we talked, we made some very brutal declarations, which I believe they are helping somebody. And we say to be quick with the word of God, number one, it's a clear indication you trust and you believe in him and you believe in his word. Men and women that are quick, to respond. Men that are prompt with God. It's a clear indication that they trust and they believe in God and his word. So when you find yourself not quick with God, it means you don't trust, you don't believe in him and his word. Are we together? He said also, people that take time to analyze, think over God, can't, they can't be prompt with God. They can't be quick with God. You give them an instruction or God instructs them, but they sit back first to analyze. Those people can never be quick with God. Ah, see, last time nilifanya hivi. Why do, why, why am I hearing I do this again? You are missing the mark. You are missing out on what God is about to do through you. And also we said for anyone to be quick with God, with God's instructions, they must have a continuous walk or relationship with God. For you to be prompt with God, it, it is necessary for you to always walk with him. In prayer, in your service, in your Bible study. So you, you can never be quick with God when you are, you, you are only a visitor to his presence. It is impossible. So you can't be quick to obey God 
This is what we say. We say well, you can't be quick to obey God and miss out on what God is doing at any given season. Men that are quick to obey God, they also capture quickly what God is doing at any given season. But men that are not quick to obey God can never know what God is doing at any given particular season. God is releasing cars. You, you are praying for us. Because you are not in sync with him. God is releasing marriages. You, you are praying for children. God is releasing visas. You, you are praying for rain. Always a mess at all seasons. But men that are quick to obey God, quick with God, men that are prompt to listen to his voice, always get in sync with what God is doing at any particular given season. Let me tell you, it's not every prayer is for every time. There are people praying prayers now for some things that will never happen. Say it in another way. You are praying for rain during drought season. No, wait for the season to end. Rain will eventually come. Seller. You are busy praying for job. God is not releasing jobs at that particular season. <laughs> God is releasing connections. Profitable connections. So instead of you praying for profitable connections, you are praying for jobs. And God says, and I will wait for you to grow up. I hope you know God has eternity to wait for you. I hope you know that God has all time to wait for you to grow up. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He won't hand over to you what you can't handle. That's why we have been praying, God, increase my capacity. I need capacity to handle what I'm asking. Because there are people asking for what they cannot contain. You are asking for a 20 liter drum of oil, but you have a kasuku which will be poured on. A one liter tin. But God is, you are asking God for 20 liter. You, you have only one liter container. What do you think will happen if it is poured? Even entering through the mouth hole, it will be a, a problem. Because your capacity is not enough. To contain what you are asking for. Say with me. Father, increase my capacity. Say it boldly. Father, increase my capacity. To align to what I'm asking you. You can't be asking for a car. You don't have a driving license. You don't know even how to drive. What are you? Do you expect God to give it to you? <laughs> We also say, people that are quick to respond to God's will always catch up with what God is doing at every season. That's what already I have explained. And we saw the story of Abraham in Genesis 22, 1 to 3, who never hesitated to do what he thought was right in the eyes of God. How many of us hesitate to do what is right? You came to church, you saw litter on the floor. But you assumed that you are not part of the cleaners. You saw the seats who are dusty. But you assumed that is not part of your job description. <laughs> you are waiting for who to come to clean. The Bible says, he who knows what, what, what to do good and does not. To them, it is a sin. Have you ever seen that scripture? Then also we said, can God, or rather we post this question, can God trust you with what he wants to do? Can God trust you with what he wants to do? If God is planning to do something in our generation, can God trust me? Can he trust me? If God wants to win the president to this ministry, can God trust you to connect you with the president? If God wants to connect Ben, it's called Ben Jezo, it's called Ben Jeff Bezos, 
He wants to connect him to this commission. Can God trust to, to call your paths to cross together? Or the first thing you will think is your stomach. It is what you can gain and not what God can gain. Many people are praying for what only them they will gain, not what God will gain. God, I want this, but there is no implication of God in the picture when the answer comes. You are a user. You are just using God. You will be like those people, is it in the book of Matthew? Those who healed, can we go to that scripture because somebody asked me a question concerning it. In Matthew, give us Matthew and give me in Amplified. Or rather, yes, give me in Message Bible. Uh, Matthew is it 17 yes Mom, Matthew 7 give us 21 to 23 somebody asked me something on this and uh, I felt it is good for us to just check it can everybody read this is concerning, give us actually from verse 20. This is 21, give us 20. Let's read together. Everybody, look at your screens. One, two, three. Who preaches? I is the main thing. Not what they say. A genuine leader will never exploit your emotions or your pocketbook. These diseased trees with their, with their bad apples are going to be chopped down and burnt. Stop. God show me this scripture for the year 2024. Wait to see this. Please, if that is your Bible, underline it very well. Put it and keep it because you will see this scripture come to pass. These preachers, all these preachers think they are, not what they say. A good preacher is not who they are. It is what they say. A genuine leader will never exploit your emotions. People that want to use prophecy eh, to collect money with tile from your pocket. People that want to use tile eh, to cause you to depart with your valuables. This season, this year, you will see people wash their hands from such churches and run where they know they will be fed. What did Jesus say? Don't forget this is Jesus speaking. These diseased trees, they are diseased trees with bad apples are going to be chopped down and burned in 2024. Give us the next scripture. Everybody, let's read. These preachers, they know the correct password. What is the password? In the name of Jesus. It's a password. Ah. They know how to use the name of Jesus. Very correctly. In fact, they can tell you the name of Jesus, what it means in Hebrew and Greek. So they have the password. Call it, they have the formula to the answer. Continue reading. Master, master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. This is Jesus speaking. Continue. What is required is serious what? The obedience should be serious. Uh -huh. Doing what my father wills. Next verse. I can see it now. At the final judgment, thousands striding up to me and saying, Master, what did we do? Number one, we preached the message. We bashed the demons. Our God-sponsored project had everyone talking. In other words, they did everything you are seeing in church today. They are casting out demons. They are healing the sick. Miracles are happening like water. They are buying buses every month. 
<laughs> they have so well put everything together to show everybody we are serious people. They have mega projects. But the Bible says they will this our God sponsor project and everyone talking next to us. And do you know what I am going to say? This is Jesus now responding to them. Let's read together. Everybody. You missed the boat. <laughs> this is after everything is said and done. Oh my goodness. This is a word I will never want to hear. Pastor Max, you thought you preached. All you are sweating and everything you did, you missed the boat. What's the next thing? All you did was use me to make yourselves important. You don't impress me one bit. You are out of here. There are people who will receive this report. I'm not kidding you. And some of them will receive even here when they are very alive. You only used my name. You used the formula I gave to arrive at every answer. You use the formula to cast out demons. Yes, demons obeyed. You use the formula to heal. Healing came. You use the formula to prophesy and the prophecy was accurate. But you missed the boat. <laughs> Seller. There's another question somebody asked. Please forgive me, I need to answer this because if I don't put it out of my way, uh, I will not. The wedding in Cana. Who can give me what was its implication? And that should not be Leah and that should not be Jason. What was the implication of the wedding in Cana? Yes, Immaculate. What was the implication? Church is for teaching. Church is a school. So get ready. Everybody will answer. So if you think you have escaped, don't worry. It, it, it ends up, it can't even a new man. Pick the mic. What was the implication of the wedding in Cana? Give us the scripture. I really don't know the implication. <laughs> Why did Jesus turn water into wine? Because there are drunkards that use that scripture to confirm to you why they drink. Is that okay? So Immaculate doesn't know. Okay, Oga, Eric, what are you waiting for? Pass, I say pass the microphone very fast. Give it to... Give us the scripture. Put it on the screen. Lorna, go ahead. Very fast. Any miracle can be performed. Any miracle can be performed. What do you mean by that? Let's assume you met with a soul that you need to win to Christ. And this soul is a drunkard. They love drinking. And they have shown you that, that scripture. And they tell you, please, can you explain to me this scripture as a two-year hold? Will you tell them any miracle can happen? Uh, tell me, what do you think that scripture means? You mean you have not gotten the scripture? Go ahead. Father. You can't explain it, Father. Okay, go ahead. Next, Pastor. Very fast. I have no how, idea. how many months are you? Yes? I have no idea. You have no idea? Yes? Don't feel shy. There's nobody to beat you. That's why we are in church. I don't know. You don't, you have no idea. Go ahead. Ne next person. Try. Don't be shy. Your answer is not wrong. Just try. If you don't know completely, you don't know. This was the first miracle that Christ ever did. If you don't know it, then you miss out his purpose. Go ahead. Okay, the implication is... Uh -huh. If the wine was there, mm -hmm. the God had to provide the wine to be there, but it's all upon you what mm -hmm. you do with the wine. Um, Amma, what is in your mind when mm -hmm. you see the wine? Awesome. Good trial. Go ahead. Next person. What's the implication, ma, of this scripture? We all read it. Okay. Can we read it, all of us? Yes. All right. Let's read. One, two, three. No, go back. Go back. No, let us read. Let us read. Begin from where the wedding began. You are moving too fast ahead of us. Go back. 
Give verse 1. Let's read. Everybody look at the screens. You know, church is not a place whereby we come and they exhaust time and we go home. How many people you have had, they don't know what that scripture means. Give us verse 1. Everybody, 1, 2, 3. If I find you no reading, you will come in front here. You are the one to answer me. So let's read. Everybody, look at the screens. And that day, there was a marriage in Cana of the uh -huh. And the mother of Jesus was there. Uh -huh. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Continue. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. So wine has finished, but it was there. And mother, mother of Jesus comes and say, they have no wine. What was the response of Jesus? Jesus said, loudly, everybody. Jesus said unto her, woman, woman what, what have, have I, I to do with thee? thee? My power is not yet come. Is this what the woman asked? Does this answer have anything to wine and what Mary asked? No. Now, this should give you the response. Let's continue. His mother said unto the servant, uh -huh. Whatever is said unto you, do it. Did he say anything? In fact, what he, Mary received was literally more of a rebuke. Continue. And they all said there are six to one. Eh, oh my goodness. Is that the king... You are, go and get your refund for English lessons. Can we read? Let's read everybody. One, two, three. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three fuckings apiece. Yes. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water and they fill them up to the brim. Continue. These people must have been very audacious. That brim, they must have been very audacious. Don't worry, you will understand why I'm saying they must have been very audacious. Continue. And he say unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it. Continue. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine. And he knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew. There's a reason that part is there. They knew where the water was coming from. <laughs> Continue. The governor of the feast called to the bridegroom. Uh -huh, and said unto him. Every man at the beginning doeth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk. The, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good one until now. Alright. Patricia, answer. What do you understand? Atiaya. <laughs> no, we are now continuing. Now go ahead now answer. What do you understand by this? What's the implication of this scripture? Don't forget I said this is the first miracle Jesus did. So, what does it mean? You have met with somebody, they have told you, the Bible says, if you want, go and rub your own. Mine still says, Jesus turned water into. So, Jesus blessed wine. So, let me continue drinking spirits and wines. Conti yes, what do you understand? What's the implication? Can I pass? Okay, pass. Give it to your, the person behind you. Then let there be another microphone coming from behind. Um, I, I think it implies yes. that the people... No, you don't think. You allow the scripture to speak to you. What, what do you think the scripture is telling you? That the people at the wedding uh -huh. um, used uh, the, <coughs> the will of Jesus to perform miracles uh -huh. to the bridegroom uh -huh. so they say that he kept the good wine until now not even knowing where the wine came from so Jesus stepped in as the current helper is that the teaching that we have always had right she's trying eh? where Jesus is you can never run out of help is that not the teaching that you have always had go ahead sister what do you understand by this 
Or rather, what does the scripture speak to you? If it is a pass, say it's a pass. Pass. Awesome. <laughs> Give grace. Grace, you have grace enough to answer. So, Grace, go ahead. Uh huh. Uh, I think by the teaching of the, te the Jesus turning water into wine, uh -huh. uh, it was totally different from what the servants were expecting. Uh -huh. And they definitely knew that Jesus is someone that they are different from them. So I think the teaching of there was like, don't see everyone as, even if you go somewhere, not everyone as, are equal. Si kila mtu wako sawa. Yes. Kuna watu wako kwa bashi, lakini wanaeza tanio majienu yote. Ikuwe mvinyo. <laughs> David akikuja kwa nyumba, mulikuwa umepika skuma bila nyama, braka braka takidogo. Nyama ina land. Ah, yeah, let's begin. Thank you. That's a good trial. Go ahead. From behind there. Sister, yes, in pink jacket. Go ahead. What do you understand? Am I wasting your time? No, sir. All right, go ahead. If it's a pass, it's a pass. It's okay. Say pass. Uh -huh. Give the next person. And if you say pass, you tell me you are passing going where. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, it's a pass. Okay. Say idea, say idea, say idea, say idea, say idea, say idea. Yes. So, two things which come to me. Yes. One is um, the manifestation of power of God. That's very good. And number, um, the, um, the glory which, was to, which is to be revealed. The glory which was to be revealed. In the days to come. And number two, uh -huh. I see the aspect of perfection. The aspect of perfection. Perfection in terms of uh, Jesus Christ and God is the author and perfecter of our faith. That's right. Looking at it this way. Uh -huh. The man asked, asked from, 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 from number one is, um, you gave the worst one. Yes. But you should have Give delayed ben the best first. The best first. Then when wakotu wakilewa, yes. unawapea ile mbaya. Now, <laughs> juxtapose that to our faith. Yes. There is perfection. Wow. Which is to come. Thank you. That's very good. Can you clap for Mr. Shedra? That is very good. Next. Yes, Daniel. Unailewa aji hapa. First. Where when he pass? No, bra. Daktari, twende kazi. Where's it? Toka kitali ukose kushika microphone. Lazimu ushike. Twende kazi. I don't want to say anything. I just want to learn. Oh, you want to learn. So it's a pass. Give to Maureen. Yes, uyo nilisema skipiwe. Let me try. Yes. I can say it's just having faith in whatever God has given to you. Having faith. If God instructs you to do something, have faith and do it. Very correct. Go ahead. Go ahead. See, Jason is smiling. <laughs> he should be worried. <laughs> he should be worried. Go ahead. All of you, you are not wrong, I've including not those who are past. You are not wrong. Uh, I've not understood it clearly, but uh -huh. I can say it is the manifestation of God's work in that wedding over there. Can you clap for this wonderful sister? That's very good. The manifestation of God's work, that is very good. Yes, Mr. David Sasa. Yes. Uh, number one, um, uh, the implication of the new wine mm -hmm. is um, an indication of the new covenant that Jesus has brought. That's the ending of the old covenant yes. and the beginning of the new covenant. Uh -huh. And when uh, the disciples fill it to the brim, uh -huh. we are told that uh, those who obeyed uh -huh. and did what Jesus or what the new covenant will be doing uh -huh. will, number two, be able to enjoy more. And that is why the other person is saying this one is better than that, that was the other before. one. That this covenant we are in is going to be much better than what we have been seeing before. Perfect. I think I've actually taught that myself. I have taught that. The, 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 the power of obedience. They were taught to feel and they truly filled them to the brim. 
But this is the implication. Just like most of you have answered. This is the implication. The implication is very simple. Jesus introduced what he came to do. Did you get it? Jesus introduced what he came to do. What, was, what did he come to do? To harvest the filthy. He came to harvest the filthy. Take us back to the place whereby it speaks about the pots. The, what was the pots. What was inside those pots? It was water that was dirty. Extremely very dirty. The water that everybody cleans their hands, their legs. That's where that water was taken from. That's why I say these men were very audacious. They fell to the brim knowing it is dirty water. Jesus' implication was I came to end the old and bring in people that were rejected. The Gentiles that were rejected, they were that new wine. You and I, we were the representative of that new wine. When Christ turned that water to wine, it is what he will do at Calvary. Washing the sins, the filthiness of even Gentiles. The old wine that had been given was the implication of the Old Testament. The prophets of the Old Testament. They had thought they had drunk the best wine in the wedding. Until what Christ has to offer, which is grace, stepped in. Are you still confused? Are you still confused? So Jesus introduced, I told you, if you read the Bible without looking at what Christ came to do, you will miss out on everything. Many people preach on this scripture with the eyes of materialism. What God can give you. When you come to church, what God can give you. But that was not the implication. Actually, this entire scripture was about salvation. I came to seek and to save the lost. The ones that society had rejected, I came to turn them to wine. The dirty men, the dirty women that were considered nobodies, I came to transform them to the kingdom of my father. That's the implication. I'm so sure whoever had asked that question has received more than enough. Is that not so? Back to our text. Being quick with God. What does it imply? What does it speak? Say boldly like we did last Sunday. Say with me, Lord. Say boldly, Lord. Whatever you are doing in this generation, whatever you are doing in my world, please do not do it without me. I yield myself to be used of you. I am available for you. So God wants you to trust him even when you don't understand. Even when I can feel you. Even when I cannot trace you. I still laugh in your world. That you are always there for me. Even when I can't feel you. Even when I cannot trace you. I still love in your world. That you are always there for me. We said many demand for speedy answers from God, yet they are too slow to follow or to obey God's direction. Don't expect quick answers if you are not quick to obey God. Are we together? Don't expect speedy results when you are too slow to obey also God's instruction. Too slow with his word, too slow to follow his presence. 
And we say delayed obedience is total disobedience. If you want the blessings of God to be quick, then also you be quick with his leading. And the other thing that we did, uh, we talked about, you go and watch the message, grow into it. And we said, when you see someone that delays to obey God, they are simply doing what? Questioning the capacity of God. When you delay to obey God, when you are too slow to follow what God is saying, it means you are either questioning his capacity or you are simply questioning the capacity and the ability of God to guide and lead you. So if God cannot lead you, if God cannot uh, direct you, then he is no longer your father. There is no relationship there. And we said we don't have eternity to obey God. Look at your neighbor, tell them, you don't have eternity to obey God. You don't have eternity to serve God here or now. So act swiftly whenever God speaks. Act quickly. Have a sense of urgency when God speaks to you. Then we said, Satan knows, of course, like we mentioned, there is no time. So let's just wind up the little bit that was remaining. Give us Hebrews. Hebrews 12. Did we read that one? No. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. You give us in message, Amplified Classic, and TLB. So we are going to read them in that order. Message, Amplified Classic, and TLB. The same Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. So everybody look into your screens. We are going to read very fast. When we get to the third one, you give us the next translation. This is message. One, two, three, everyone. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat. No parasitic sins. Continue. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race we are in. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in, with, in and with God he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he is there in the place of honor, right alongside God. Continue. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility, he plowed through that we should adrenaline into your souls. Do you know what adrenaline means? When you need to put your best feet forward. Jesus never lost sight of the race. Give us the next, uh, th let's read together. One, two, three. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every incumbrance and necessary weight. And that sin which is so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patient, endurance, and steady, and active persistence the pointed course of the race. That is set before us. Yes. Looking away from all that will distract. Meaning you can't obey God if you are distracted by things. Material things have distracted you. You can't obey God. When self distracts you, you can't obey God. When society distracts you, you can't be quick with God. When worry about the unforeseen, you can't obey God. 
we planned to buy a TV in the first week of, uh, of January. I can guarantee you there are people who not only didn't, did, they forgot. They are remembering as I'm speaking. It's now they are remembering, wait a minute, did I make a pledge? Did I do anything? Wait a minute. Did, did, I, did I say I'll give anything? They forgot completely. But December, ndiyo walikuwa mabanzu. Ndiyo walikuwa naitwa kiongoz. In the village. Mkuu. But they forgot God completely. And they focused. But also in the same vein, there are people the following day, they redeemed their own. They didn't wait for January. It was released automatically. Not because they have much. But God, I want to be quick with you. Because I know when it is my turn, there will be no delay in place. They bought chips, chicken, and they posted it on Instagram for us to see. Because we didn't eat our, our own was, was spent in the house of God. No holiday, no nothing. God, will your house still look like how we left it? We were here when? When was this? Um, when was the, we were making the instruments? When we learned all our speakers literally are burnt. When was this? When we were here? No, not Saturday. Saturday it was just a continuation. Thursday we were here. All our speakers, all gone. Including all these, the ones in front here. Miss why on every side. You think those who came here, we spoke in tongues and we told them, go. Go home in peace. <laughs> and that's why you will hear people say, it is well. It is well. Let me have one suit, but let the house of God have ten of them. When the time comes for rewards, we will see who lied to who. You build mansions now. Buy property now. Let the work of God crumble as you are watching. The time will come. It will be so evident who served God honestly and who played. Are we together? Oh, you think the TV will go to my house? <laughs> with all humility, I have one small one and I'm comfortable with it. And I'm planning to upgrade it. At least to be to my liking. And if the one fails in the, my house, I can come and watch the one we bought for God. And I will ask him permission. Are we together? If I can't watch citizen in my house, I'll pay the price to come here and watch. Is that okay? So keep on dilly-dallying with God. Play games with God. And you will realize he knows how to play games better than he plays better than you. But be genuine with God. Be quick with him. And Isaiah will be your portion. Before they called, I answered. Before they asked, I gave. Why? I am quick with them because they are quick to follow my ways. Before I think what I need in my house, they are there to say, Pastor, can we change this and this and this? Pastor, can we correct here? Can we at least do something about this, this situation? You know, there are people in churches, not in this one, amen? There are people in churches that never know how even the bills of that place are paid. They are never involved in anything. And when they give 1,000, they tell the entire church, that the way we are giving this year, ah, your 1,000, let me tell you, it's a privilege to give. That's why we don't force anybody to give. It's a privilege to give. An honor to give to God. You keep on saying, I don't have anything to give. Are you telling me God is wicked? He has never given you anything. Oh, I don't have anything to give, Pastor. You know, God will understand. You are literally telling me, God is so wicked. He has given me nothing. Nothing. I don't have anything to give. With your giving or without your giving, you will find it there. 
and they will keep on flowing in. They'll keep on flowing in. <laughs> There's one of our declarations behind there. What, what are we giving this year? I am giving generously and I am receiving. It's only the giver that will receive. The only thing you will receive is your bread. It's free for everybody, including witches. That's what you receive for free. So the receiving there is not for you. But if you are ready, there's still time for you. Let's read on. Who is the leader and the source of our faith? Looking away from all that we, with that which will distract. To Jesus, who is the leader, the source of our faith? Giving the first incentive for our belief. And also it is its finisher, bringing to the maturity and perfection. He for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You want to be seated this year? Be ready to say, yes, I know this year. Abundance. I know this year needs to go to salon, but not when I know there's a pledge I need to release for my God. One month will not kill me. I must fulfill because I know him that I am serving. They will laugh at you for only one month. After that, you will laugh, you laugh at them forever. Seller. <laughs> Let's read. Everybody. Just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your minds. Yes, next translation. This might be the only scripture, so don't worry. Everybody, since we have a huge crowd of men of faith watching us from the grandstands, let us strip off anything that slows us down. Can you see what I'm saying? This year, purpose not to be slow with God. This year, purpose not to be slow with God. Or holds us back, especially those things that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet. And trip us and trip us up and let us run with patience. The particular race that God has set before us. You can go and read the entire. I only needed you to see this. So write this down. You will waste time if you don't understand the voice of God. You will waste time when you don't understand the voice of God. Men that understand the voice of God, they waste no time. They don't wait their friends to confirm if God has spoken. I know people that when they hear the voice of God, they want to go to confirm. Minister David, uh, I want to confirm something I had last night. Uh, God told me I need to buy pastor some new shoes. Ebu confirmed to me. What are you doing now? What are you doing? Did David become bigger than your God? Oh, let me, I, I want to confirm with the Immaculate. Hey, Immaculate, imagine I had, I, I have this leading in my spirit. I should buy Mamlea a dress. And you begin to compete. You're asking Lorna. Lorna hates Mamlea with a passion. Thank God, no, she doesn't hate you, Lea. I'm just using an example. And she stands and says, why do you need to buy a, a dress? Why can't you buy batteries for the church? And you go back home. Ah, by the way, ah, why should I waste buying a dress and quiet to in a battery? And that person diverts your blessing to what was unnecessary. Are you hearing me? This year decide what I hear from God. The good I hear from God. I don't need an affirmation from nobody. I will arise and do it. That's where so many people are failing. Because you want to look for human entity to affirm a divine entity. And you end up missing.
Write this down. God can't instruct you if you don't understand his voice. That is what we have said. By the way, have I ever taught you the, the series about hearing the voice of God? Have I taught about the series about hearing the voice of God? You need to go back and re-listen to that. Is that okay? 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. TLB and message. 1 Corinthians 24 to 27. TLB. 9, 24 to 27. Everybody look at the screens. Let's read. In a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets first prize. So run your race. To do what? Don't wait for somebody to... All of us, we are running. Don't allow somebody to take your place because you began to look how they are running. You see how Nicholas is serving. He is running his race. You see how Immaculate is serving. She is running her race. Grace is running her race. Jason is running her race. Leah is running her race. Meshach is running her, his race. Don't look who is serving alongside you. Let your race be personal this year. I will be in church on time. I will not wait for nobody. I will do what is right. I will not consult anybody. Do you need to consult anyone to do what is right? Okay, I want to hear. How many people consulted their friends before you wore clothes to church? Uh, abundance, should I wear clothes today or I should go to church naked? How many people consulted? If you didn't consult anybody before you put on your clothes, then why do you need to consult the good God has placed in your spirit? You have been told, can you buy Nicholas a suit? And you begin to say, me. I bind the spirit of the Wester. I bind the spirit of West Edge. Me, 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 Nicholas. I will continue. Continue. You will see what happens to you. In a race, everyone ran. So run to win. Next, everybody. To win the contest, you must deny yourselves. Many things. Tell your neighbor, you must deny yourself many things. Oh, you are not prophesying. Speak to them prophetically. You must deny yourself many things. Announce to them your money, your time, including sacrificial givings. You must deny yourself so many things. You will deny yourself going to a party so that you come for practice. You will deny yourself good shoes. You wear gum boots because like Immaculate, you have to pass through the mud to be in church. Are we together? You will deny yourself good air that you made just yesterday and say, I can't be late to church. I, I will walk out of this jam and run to be in church. You must, to win the contest, you must deny yourself many things that would keep you from doing your best. Nicholas and all the singers, they will tell you they don't eat sukari. That's where their voices are changing. So we separate more than Ask models, ask wrestlers, ask runners. There's nobody became their best and they didn't sacrifice things in their lives. We have mom, our mom, Daktari, all the way from very far county from here. You think this is the best, the biggest church in the entire of Nairobi? You think she doesn't have time? Oh my goodness. You think she spoke in tongues to the Makanga on the... I'm going to church. You people, you will understand. I, I can't pay fare to and fro. We have to negotiate. I'll pay to go. Going back. John the Baptist was preaching in the desert. Who came? All the big men from the city came to the same place. Get ready. This year, you will see people flock here like water. 
Oh. <laughs> Father, let them, let them see it like a joke until it happens. You will see men you, ne you only see on TV. You will hear, <laughs> there's somebody who approached me. The time uh, Pastor Lynette ca came here and uh, she came to be a blessing to us. They came, Pastor, how can you not tell us she was there? I asked them, what did you want? What did you want? I said, at least I could have come and at least greeted her. Yeah. I said, ah. So you think that's all what she stands for? <laughs> and another one was looking for selfie. That's why I pity people. You meet with big people. I'm not talking about immaculate. You meet with big people. <laughs> so you can think. Wait, Grace, stand. You are a soldier, so there is no problem. Thank God for Grace. And thank God for what she told me. But do you know that this, this small girl as she is? Do you know the kind of people she rubs shoulders with? Have you ever visited her page? Have you ever visited Grace's page? How many people has, have seen Grace's page? Apart from Immaculate. And uh, the, you, are, you are yours. Is it somehow, somehow you, st you stumbled into their pa in our page? How many people? Please, I give you permission. Go look for Grace. Oh. Grace who? Oh, Okulu. And Cameline. Let Cameline give you the... Exa That's what I was telling them, Cameline, by the way. I told them... Is it not what we have said about Cameline? Has she not walked with two legs inside the church? <laughs> anyway, with all humility, thou, this lady rubs shoulders with at least reasonable people in the society. It will be an error if she doesn't succeed. An error. I know, me I know, she will succeed. She has no choice. She has no choice. As per succeeding, she has no choice. But her success should depict where God positioned her. Are we together? So, if God has given you such opportunities and nobody has heard about Christ. Grace was in Japan, Japan, right? And she's, she's going to Japan, by the way. You are, you are going today. Nobody should open that door for her. Nobody should. You are all here when Grace came back. And I told her she came back, we are sending her back again. Now she is going to a better place. Today, she is going. She has experienced everything. But when she went the first time, what did she do? If you can remember what she told us. She began to connect people to the church. Actually, the reason we have our root here is because of her. She is the one that ensured we have a router. Very nice one. This time around, she will improve it. She will improve the MBBSs. But at least one person knows our existence outside this nation. Because she went out. You, you go out. Nobody will ever know whether we exist or not. Please, Grace, sit down. See, I told you about Camilla in the same thing, Right? And I told you she will come with her long hair. I told you. And I also told you what will happen tomorrow. You are here when I said it. Is that not so? Let's continue reading. If you don't get it. Let's continue. To win, let's read all from the beginning. To win, you must deny yourselves many things that would keep you from doing your best. An athlete goes to, to all this trouble just to win a blue ribbon or a silver cup. But we do it for a heavenly reward that never disappears. Continue. So I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. I fight to win. I am not just a shadow boxing or playing around. Give us the next translation. Okay, let's continue. Like an athlete, I punish my body, treating it roughly 
training it to do what it should, not what it wants to. Otherwise, I fear that after enlisting others for the race, I myself might be declared unfit and ordered to stand aside. Oh my goodness. You remember the song? Who, who remembers the song from this scripture? <laughs> Spirit fire me. Spirit fire me up. That I, that I may not set men on fire. While I am cold. Spirit fire me up. Spirit fire me up. That I may not set men on fire. While I am cold. God, let me not set men on fire and I am cold. Continue. Let's read. You, you've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs. One wins. What are you supposed to do? Run to win. Run to win. In 2024, be intentional. I will do things that will bring intentional results. Be intentional to serve God. And God will intentionally do things in your life. Don't be callous this year. You see, one determinant for an athlete to win, for those of you that are not people that run, one determinant for an athlete to win, it is his promptness to the sound of the gun. If he delays a little bit, if, even though he is the best, he can lose that race. How quick the athlete is, how quick he, he responds to the sound of the gun that sounds when they are being released will determine if he wins or loses. We are still in January. Be ready like th th that athlete. Be prompt to obey and follow God. Be very quick. To follow every instruction. Because a delay to the sound of the gun can cost a good runner their win. The greatest challenge among many God's children is not because they don't obey God, but they obey God too late. We say that on Sunday. Many people, the challenge is not because you don't obey God, but you obeyed God late. That's why we say uh, when you obey late, it means you didn't obey. When you obey when it is late, it is deemed as you never obeyed. God told you, go and uh, help Cameline wash her house. <laughs> you may never know what was waiting for you. As you are washing the house, Cameline lost like 100,000 some time ago. And all you needed is only 10,000. As you are washing the house, you come across the bag with the money. Say, ah, elder, here is the bag of money. Say, ah, I forgot about it. But because you have found it, it's 50-50. 50,000 is yours. 50 is mine. <laughs> you know somebody is saying to, to their mind, see happen. See happen to him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there are people who obey God too late and they get no results. When you obey late, don't accept to God. I mean, don't, don't wait for answers. When you are quick to obey, that's where the answers are. In other words, these people who obey God late. They didn't move when they were taught to move. They didn't act when they were, the waters were stirred. Tell your neighbor, enter the pool when the water gets stirred. Tell them, enter the water when it has been stirred. God stirs you up to pray, pray. He stirs you up to worship, worship. He stirs you up to call somebody and pray for them or speak with them about Christ. 
Do it immediately. Don't wait for tomorrow. Otherwise, you will be in one place for 38 years. Like the man in the book of John. Remember the man in the book of John? For 38 years. Give us that scripture. Let's read TLB. TLB. My heart will sing. Oh, oh. John 5. All right. This one you can read because it's a repetition of what I did last Sunday. Is that okay? Go and read. That, the story of that man that was in one place for 37 years. Verse 7 says, The sick man said, Sir, or rather, let me read from verse 4. Or rather, from verse 3. Crowds of sick folks, lame, blind, with paralyzed limbs, lay on the platforms, waiting for a certain movement of the water. For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and disturbed the water, or rather shook the water. And the first person to step into it afterwards was healed. Five, one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. This man was not 38 years old. He was sick 38 years. What was the reason? He was not prompt. He was not quick to enter the water the moment an angel stirred it up. There are Christians seated in one place and they can be there for so long because of this simple illustration. They are too slow with God. It's not because they don't obey God. It's not because they don't do the things God wants them to do. But they do it late. They enter the pool when it is too late. This man, I mean for that eight years, you have mouth, you have eyes. Why can't you pay somebody or tell somebody, stand here? When the angel comes, just kick me in. How many people here are 38 years? Not to embarrass anybody. 38 years. Do you have anybody 38 years here? Sorry? No, no, no. I'm, I'm looking 38 years. You can tell there's nobody here 38 years. And if you are to look for those who are above 38 years, there are very few. Meaning a child was born. This man was seated there. The child finished nursery school, primary school, secondary school, university, the child married and had a child. Or several children. But the man was in one spot. Why? There was no promptness in his spirit at all. No promptness. Verse 7 he speaks about the, the sick man after he was asked. Look at, so that you see how he wasn't quick with God at all. Verse 6. When Jesus saw him and knew he, how long he had been there. He, he had been healed. He asked him, would you like to get well? Would you want, do you want help? And what was the response? Next verse. Let's read everybody. No, read the first sentence. What was the question? Do you want to be well? What was the next sentence? I can't. Was this what he was asked? Was he asked to explain the, it was a straight yes or no. But look at the sentence he began with. I can't. <laughs> because he, is, he has even doubted himself to ever get well. There are people that have gone through stuff and they have gotten to a point. They even doubt if God can help them. I can't. Let's continue. The sick man said, For I have no one to help me into the pool. At the movement of the water. While I'm trying to get there. Someone else. Always gets. Many there are people who came there. Who are even no sick like him. But they were so quick. To do what is needed to be done. This year purpose in your heart. I will be quick. To every promptness. God places in my heart. 
Camilla, if God tells you jump seven times, stop the car, st step outside the car, and stand there and begin to jump. Count seven times, enter the car and continue your journey. God have done what he wanted. I've always told you this illustration. One time, those days in the village, I was standing and I was with some people around me in the field. And I was told, lift one of your right hand. Lift your right hand. And I lifted it. And I was told, audit there and count one to twenty. And I started counting one, two, three, four, five, until to twenty. The moment I stepped down, there was a snake just like I just in ahead of me. Everybody freaked and froze in their heels. They could not say because it was standing right behind me. And the voice came, lift your right hand and count one to twenty and put it back. And I counted, I finished. When I put it back, here is the Mr. Sapenta. And of course it was quick, quickly, quickly buried. Arietly buried without any ceremony. But everybody was how did you know there was something? You didn't look back. You didn't move. You just stood there and you lifted your leg. Some instruction may look funny, may look very stupid, but just follow them and see what will happen. Say with me, this year will be quick with God. No time to waste. The implication of what we have just read in John 5, and especially verse 7, you are inside an charged atmosphere like we are. God speaks a word that you know it is yours, but you are there seated. Your amen didn't even come out. What have you done? Somebody else says amen on your behalf. They have jumped on the pool. So what you are expecting will happen to your neighbor. And you begin to say, Mi naombanga Maureen here and apatanga majibu. <laughs> and you start hating Maureen for no reason. No, she jumped when the waters were stirred up. Jumped when the waters were stirred up. There are those who say, oh, I've been serving God for all the blah, 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 how many years? Ask them, how quick have you been with God, even in your serving? How quick have you been with God? No, there are people in church, but their hearts are full of only wishes. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. <laughs> They say, if wishes were houses, beggars would buy. I wish I can buy Pasi a car. No, stop wishing. Began to show it. Are we together? Go buy my leather shoe and call it I bought Pasi Migu Yagari ni Menunua Sasa. Begin where you are. These <laughs> Nicholas. Maybe he will need bigger ones. Uh, there are people they can't want, they, they don't believe God can use them to accomplish big things. But listen to me. Some of you listening to me, in fact, all of you, you will do things that will shake your villages. You will build, you will buy things that will shake your generations. As small, as quiet as you are, this year you will do things in big scale. Mega projects. When you hear it is Anne Kasambeli that did it, you will doubt. You will doubt if that girl can do it. I'm speaking into your lives. This year you will do great things, bigger than yourselves. Bigger than yourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I was talking to someone about uh, people that uh, they literally they, they, they agree wealth to, to be wealthy is of the devil. I said they are the devil themselves. If somebody tells you to be wealthy is evil, they are just lying to you. All of you, you must be wealthy, you must be rich, and you will be in health. In the name of Jesus Christ. No, there is a category of people that can never. Camilla, do you know there are people, if God instructs a man, let's say the man, who should I use? The man is coming to Lona and gives Lona 
aviate. What do you think will begin to run in the mind of Lorna? Uyo mtu anataka kunitoa kwa Mungu, si ndio? Uyo mtu huyu mtu ana roho mtakatifu ako na roho mtaka. <laughs> because Lorna doesn't believe that God can give her a V8. She has never envisioned it. But this year, please I beg of you, envision great things. Envision great things because great things. Get ready. This year you will receive things in a mega scale. Oh, you did hear me. You will get things in a mega scale. I decree this year men will hear God on your head. Men will hear and do what God has prompted them in the name of Jesus. And there will be no delay. Oh, there will be no delay. I'm speaking to somebody. A man will hear God concerning you. A woman will hear God concerning you. As a church, men will hear God concerning us. And they will come running to do what God has instructed them. Just be quick with God. Men will, be, will, be, will come running to you. Because God will push them very fast. So begin to be swift with God in your level. Don't wait when you can do greater things. Other you know, people, when they hear God says, give to us this project or give to us that project, most of them you will see them, let's wait who will give. How many people want to pledge we buy new keyboard? They are waiting. Satuone. Grace ame inuwa mkono? Hmm. Kama Grace aja inuwa, mimi nita inuwa kaa nani? Hmm. Let me see. David ame, David ame inuwa mkono? Hame inuwa. Okay. Wacha nisikia atasema atatoa ngapi? David says 5,000. Ah, they say, ah, David 5,000. Eh, nikiti compare na David 2,000. <laughs> they don't give according to God. They give according to man. It is not the motivation of God that moves them. They do it according to what the crowd is doing. It's just like those people that they are still struggling to give 10% to God. 10%. When there are people that moved from percentage with God, there are people, there is no percentage with God. God, is there anything you want me to do? It's not about my percentage. Is about, I want that project done. Ask this young man how much it costed just to have all this painted and outside there. Just ask. You will, you, you will think it is a joke. You think it, it, it is. A, how many courts went to these walls? Court. How many courts they, did, they needed to do before they can have now the white? Three courts. Three courts. For it at least to smoothen number one before you can apply what you need. For over almost four or five days, Leah and uh, the son, the church became their place. We used to meet here every day. Do you think we are stupid? You think we didn't have anywhere to go? Oh, you are very wrong. Very wrong. Say it once again. This year, I will be prompt with God. I'll be quick with God. I will be swift with God. So the moment you will see my new car, and not one, several, just know they didn't just appear. Something was done in the secret. What are you doing in the secret that men will see in the open? So ask yourself, how prompt will you be this year? How prompt will you be beginning from now? Because there's time. Write this down. Timely response to God shows honor. When you respond to God timely, it's a clear indication of how much you honor God. Men that honor God, they quickly obey him. Timely response to God is a clear show of honor to God. Give us John 21, 1 to 6. And I think that's where we will end. 
John 21, 1 to 6. TLB. TLB Bible translation. And as they are given, let us read together. One, two, three, look at the screens. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the lake of Galilee. This is how it happened. Uh -huh. A group of us were there. Simon, Peter, Thomas, the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee. My brother James and I and two other disciples. Continue. Simon Peter said, I am going fishing. Well, we'll come to. We all said we did, but caught nothing. When you follow men that God has not instructed you to follow, it is nothingness you will catch. I'm saying about 2024. Follow men that have the voice of God. Follow men that have God in their mind and in every step they take. Don't follow men that are living thinking they will prosper elsewhere. Peter left the church and he said, let me go back to my business. The master has died. Only for those who followed him, they all caught nothing. Continue. Next verse. At dawn, we saw a man standing on the beach but couldn't see who he was. Continue. He called, any fish boys? No, we replied. Then he said, throw your net. Can you see how precise it is? Don't just throw your net on any side. Throw on the right side. What next? And you will get plenty of them. So we did. And couldn't draw in the net because of the weight of the fish. There, they, there were so many. Yes? Oh, no, just end it up to there. So, number one lesson we learned from this is they didn't, they didn't just respond. They responded precisely. This year, respond to God precisely. God says, buy Cameline a red wig. Buy red. Don't go and say, hey, red and that skin color. No. The voice said red. Buy red. Patricia, you are going home. God says, branch to the church. Branch there. Don't go home. You are sleeping. The Holy Spirit says, wake up. Go to the kitchen. Go. Don't go there with, eh, chanyen kakule kwanza ni kingojia chenyatasema. No, it didn't send you to go to it. Just go. Be precise with the instruction. Listen, many people are missing out on God's instruction because they are adding or subtracting from what God wants to instruct them. Go to the kitchen. You say to yourself, let me go and eat as I wait. May God deliver you. So when God tells you, throw your net on the right side, don't throw it on the left. Come to church at 9 a.m. What time will they come? After choir or Mesha Maliza, Yonitakuja. They know how to guide themselves. They are very wise. They are very wise. Ah, prayers are subui. Ah, tunashindianga kuzi repeat. Otherwise, nita watch nikifika nyumbani. Continue. You are throwing your net on the left side. The net was thrown on the right side. Church time is 9, not 9.30. Not 9.05. Nine, nine, nine on the dot, you are seated. I want you, okay, please, I want you to try it. With your bosses. Nobra, with your boss. Let the timetable say, report at work at 10. I dare you, be reporting at 10.30 every day. See what will happen. See what will happen. When God says it is nine, be here at nine, not nine or five. Ah, mm. We are talking about be precise with responding to what God has instructed. Don't just respond. Respond precisely. Don't be wise in your... Meshach is here. He has been in the corporate world. 
What time do you, do you use to get to your office? Nine. Uh -huh. Very early. Did anybody carry any stick to wake you up? You organized your system to a point whereby every very early you are in the office. But in church, who is taking register? Who is taking roll call? Is there any biometric where we should sign in what time we came in? Don't worry. Angels are standing there. Demons also are standing there. To mark who came early and who came late. <laughs> you, of course, you know the devil knows how to accuse, right? He knows how to use what you do to accuse you. That is his office. So don't allow this year any devil to accuse you. Give your tithes, they will say. I will decide how much I will give. And I will decide when I will give. Ah, congratulations and success in your endeavors. Keep on throwing your net on the wrong side. Listen to me. God can give you chances to see how quickly you will change your ways. But a time will come it will give you up to your own desires. Do whatever you please. I know people here in this church. This church. As early as this January, they lied to me. Ah. Oh, you think I can call you by name? David, did you send your tithe? Eh, hey, Pasi, eh, unajua awajatulipa. Ah, okay. No problem. It is yours. It's not mine. Whether you give, you don't give. It's yours. Let me tell you. You will seem like you are succeeding. But where you are is slippery. The beauty with God, he doesn't take away what he has spoken through his servant that he wants to do in your life. But what you will receive becomes a pain to your life. You will get the money, you will be paid, but that money will always waste away. Waste away. Why? You decided to lie to yourself and lie to God. Ask Ananias and Sapphira. Ask Ananias. What was the response from Peter? Was the land not yours? It was yours. The money was yours. Was it not yours? It was yours. So why did you decide to lie to the Holy Spirit? immediately the man collapsed and died. There are people you might not die natural death, but things will begin to die around you. Why? Because you are playing games with God. Daniel, and Elia Kucheza. Cheza too. Because you will see that Kamari na Brikicho Banju. Brikicho Banju. Continue playing. Your play will be seen by everybody. If God be God, serve him. Now the choir, come to practice. What time were you supposed to come on Saturday? 10. They stroll in at 12. 12 is when they are strolling in. And they only have one hour. They have spent four hours on the route, but one hour only to practice for their father. But tell them, let's meet Kwakina Immaculate. Kuna bash na inaanza saa kumi na mbili. They will sleep there. They will ask for a sleepover. So that the best is not taken by another. But when it comes to God, Do you remember the story of the man that almost missed his miracle because of pride? In the book of, uh, we will not read, 2 Kings. 2 Kings 5, 9 to 13. 2 Kings 9 to 13. Do you remember the story? The man was told, go and wash yourself where? In Jordan. What was the response? Where I come from, are there no better rivers there? And the man of God said, do whatever you want. Do as you wish. But he had someone that was full of correct mind and told him, Sir, if the man of God asked for money or for something big from you, would you not have not given out? I said, Yes, I would have given out. 
So why are you refusing to do such a simple thing? Like go and wash yourself in the Jordan River. And he obeyed. And his miracle came. And when the miracle came, he tried to bribe back his way. And his everything was rejected. And of course, you know what happened after that. Go and read the story in 2 Kings. Finally. Oh, say with me, finally. Say it louder so that I remember we said finally. finally. Write these things down because they will happen in 2024. I gave you some uh, during the first service of the, the month. Write this. This is for you. This is for you. This year, there's going to be prompt response to the true word of God. This year, you will see men thirsty for the true knowledge of God. What does that mean? It means people will stop seeking miracles. People will stop looking for prophecies. People will get tired of can I prophesy? Can I pro 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 fe 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 se se se? You will do that. People will walk out from the church this year. People will seek the undiluted word of truth. Please write it down. Because you will see it, you will hear it. Next part. This year, wickedness will be suppressed by the word of God. Wickedness. People that are trying to penetrate wickedness in the lives of people. The word of God will be so strong to oppose every wickedness. The word of God will be so strong to oppose. So, what does that tell you? Be worded this year. Carry the word of God in your mouth. Don't joke with your Bible. Carry the word of God in your mouth. Because it will be the only weapon that will quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And number three, you will see darkness eroded away from the lives of God's children. People that have been caved, caged. People that have been overwhelmed by so much darkness. They will be brought into light. Because the light of God, which is the word of God, will shine upon them. In other words, scales that have kept God's children blind from the true word of God will fall off you will begin to have revelation of God's word like never before. You will see men carry revelation. Young men, young boys, young girls carry revelation as though they have been to theological schools this year. Uh, PJ can tell you it has already started happening. I'm telling you, very soon we are we are we are rattling things in very high places. We are rattling things. In this man and the mother can tell you. There are places to Nachokoza Nyuki. <laughs> With the word. And young men are rising to the correct understanding of the word of God. Young girls are rising. What do you call it? They peruse the word and they understand what they are perusing. So don't be left out. You remember when 2023 began, I told you how the, the religious, uh, I told you the religions that are camouflaging as churches will be exposed, right? And we began to hear about the Shakaola and the rest. This year, the Lord said, everything will be taken to another level. Churches will be exposed and I'm waiting so much waiting. God to separate the wheat from the chaff. Wheat from the chaff. And what the Lord told me is this year many religious organizations that claim to be of God but are not 
will be exposed and shut down. This year, any religion that camouflages or claims to preach Christ, but they are doing their nonsenses, in this nation, they will all be exposed and shut down. Only the church that is speaking the true gospel of Christ. Please, what I'm telling you, write it down. Because you will need it when the time comes. Listen to me. If you don't teach Christ in this year ends forth. <laughs> if you don't teach him who came, suffered, was crucified, buried, and resurrected. This year, it will be difficult to stand on this pulpit. It will be a thorn for you to stand and preach in any podium. If it is not Christ, you are serving people. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't support it. But have you seen how teachers have been frogmatched from schools? You will see pastors being frogmatched from churches. Is either you teach us the true gospel or stop till telling us stories from the pulpit. This year ends forth. You will see what will happen. Another thing that the Lord told me. And don't forget, those of you that are still preaching God in a bottle, brooms to sweep the devil, holy water, hmm? and holy handkerchiefs, holy stones to stone Goliaths, holy soil. Even if you picked it in Israel, I'm holier than that soil by far. Anyone that will be found doing materialism this year, I pity you. Materialism gospel will not have place <laughs> in this dispensation. No, I know what I had and I know what I'm telling you. So if you are seeking for material, materialism uh, in gospel, forget it. This time round, the fire will be too much to handle. This same year, get ready to see great renowned authors burn their books. Get ready to see people tear their books that were considered as materials that can be used in the church. Get ready to see many pastors come to the rightful knowledge of the true word of God. The Lord said he will begin to rekindle a father, a fire of the true gospel into the hearts of many pastors. Many pastors. You will see pastors sit down to be taught the true gospel this year. And number two, he said, you will see pastors, leaders of churches, members who will catch the light of the true gospel of Christ and they will move churches without any regrets. People will move churches without regrets. Pastors, leaders, members, you will see them move churches without any apology. Why? They have caught the fire. They have caught the light of what should be taught in every church. In other words, people will get tired of theatrics in church this year and thenceforth. And he also told me this one I mentioned as we ended last week. This year, please, I pray that your spirit catches what I'm about to say. Is that okay? This year, what looks insignificant will become significant. Please write it down. What looks insignificant will become significant. What was significant will become insignificant. Those who have been parading themselves as something will be reduced to nobodies. And nobodies will be elevated to become somebodies. Number two, water will turn to vapor and vapor will turn to water. What am I saying? Those who have been invisible or deemed invisible will become visible. 
And those who have been deemed visible will become invisible. <laughs> do, you, do you know, David, it's not a surprise if you see the president here. Not a surprise at all. Behind the back of nowhere. But well visible now. The stone that the builders rejected will this time round become the chief cornerstone. My, 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 my counsel is this. Please don't down look on anybody. Are you hearing me? Don't down look on nobody. This is on her. The same girl you down looked on. The same small boy you down looked on will become your employer. If you don't take care. In other words, what I'm trying to say is humility is key in this year. Humility is key this year. Don't look at, at uh, Eric and say, ah, this small young boy that is always quiet, and you slap him at the back. Can you see how good he's looking when he is uh Akinolewa na Kinyozi Mzuri? Ali change Kinyozi. And if you don't clap, he's looking good. He's looking good. And he's looking very smart. Every day, Eric, is, you are looking good every day. You are looking like, like now the star we know you are. So no, lower, no lowering of that standard is only half. Is that okay? So that when we say we have a musician in this place, we say it with our heads eye. I hope you know he has new songs he has produced. Now, Janunu at Albamo, Jato just subscribe to the YouTube channel. You are wicked. You are just wicked. I say it every, no, I say it every time. He has several songs to his name. He has produced songs and he is a producer. So please look for his YouTube channel. The best you can do is support him, project him outside there. Is that okay? Let's be the ones that we will be proud of what God is doing through his life. If he has produced, a, there's a song he has done not long ago. Very wonderful song. You listen to it, you'll be blessed. Before we go, eh, So, listen, that's how everybody began. This guy will be on every billboard. It's just grace. Grace is walikuwa na kutharautu kuwa na wetu hapa. Si walikuwa na fikiria uwezi enda mbali. Eh? Ukifika huko nataka uweke ile clip ya hapa ni wapi? Hapa ni wapi? <laughs> Usiseme mwalimu wa Max cause hapa tuko na walimu. So you... <laughs> This year what has been invisible will be visible. And what was visible will turn to be invisible. Write this. What was irrelevant in the eyes of men? will be made relevant. People that have deemed you irrelevant this year, they will see relevance redefined when they look at your life. What was irrelevant, what man saw as irrelevant will be relevant this year. As like I said, get ready. Those who are considered nobodies will become somebodies. And also get ready to witness what was impossible become possible. This year alone with all humility, at least we will send away. Grace is already going. She is number one. But there are four people we are yet to send away. Four. We are yet to send four people. This year. I didn't say next year. This year. People that never look like they know where the airport is located. Get ready. They will be traveling like water. Not for sickness, not for anything bad. But to enjoy life and to bring God glory. Get ready. And that will be the beginning of our sending of bunches out there. Many more will come. I said at least four. I didn't say it will end at four. Five I was told this year. Grace is already gone. I told her before even she, because she told me. We were speaking and I told her what God showed me. Get ready, Oga. This year, you must go. You, it's a must. You must go. But decide to live 
with God and for God. Decide to do what is right. Decide to follow. Decide to be led. You lead yourself, forget about what I'm saying. Cameline, of course you know. Of course you know. Of course you know. I want you to go home and read Acts 19, 8 to 20. Acts 19, 8 to 20. January should be your month to build capacity. If you have not built capacity in prayer, build now. Are, we, are, we, are, you, are, we fol are you following me? January, build capacity. Build momentum in January. Don't wait until February. And there is still time in January. If you have not prayed, take time and pray the remaining days of January. I beg of you. I beg of you as your man of God. Take time and pray consciously for the remaining days of this year. I speak to every one of you, both online and those in this place. Build capacity. Build momentum. There is time if you have not done it yet. We have a 90 days program of prayer that will be online. If you have not being part of people that have been praying in the 12 days, it, you still have time to connect to the fire. You know, before a plane gets to the air, it builds momentum fast. It is stagnant in one place, but the turbines are so violently spinning. So that when it is launched up there, there is no place for landing again. So this time round, build capacity, build momentum. For those of you that are going for gym, amen? You want to go back to shape, amen? amen. So that you fit your wedding gown, amen? amen. And your suits, amen? amen? One thing I noticed is when you want to lift the very heavy weights that I see Grace sometimes lift, you have to breathe in very hard, store up that breath inside, then you lift the thing. Is that not so? So the thing is being lifted with already stored up breath. This January, store up good breath so that you can lift every month. Are we together? Even divers, if they are diving without a mask, what do they do first? Breathe in very hard and they lock in the air. Then they go under the water. This month is for that. If you don't do that, you will suffocate very, very soon. An aeroplane that will try to take off without building momentum, it can just try to lift, but it, can, it will never lift. I know what I'm speaking. So lo January, lock in air to sustain you till December. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can you be on our feet? Have you been blessed? Use this month very wisely. Use the remaining days of this month very wisely. Today I overshot because I wanted to finish the series. But all our services will from now and forth end exactly at one. Is that okay? Today I wanted to end the series that I began. Because on Sunday I want us to begin something very new. I wanted us to redo the teaching about giving. How many people are interested? The rightful giving. Why should I give? How should I give? Are you interested? So can we begin that series on Sunday? The rightful giving. So that we serve God with genuinity. Not being coerced to serve God. Not being cornered to serve God. Is that okay? So on Sunday, by the grace of God, we will begin that. And uh, if you have questions concerning giving, on Sunday we will have time to do that. Is that okay? We'll have time because it might be short because I have done it before. So please invite people. There are people outside there that are keep on saying, why should I pay tithe? Why should I give? Is it biblical? Is it scriptural? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? Is that okay? So that you will have a good, a good understanding about giving. Is that okay? All right, lift up your hands and just tell God, thank you for the word. Thank you, thank you Father, for giving me this timely word. 
that you have given unto me, that you have given unto us. We do not take it for granted, Lord, that you have shown us cl with clarity what you desire of us throughout this year. Father, we ask for your grace. We ask for grace, Lord, to do what you expect of us. We ask, Lord, for strength. We ask, oh God, where we have gone astray, what we have done that is contrary, where we have been too slow with you. Father, we receive grace to be quick to be swift with you, God. Where I have been slow to obey, where I have been slow, Lord, to follow your leading, Father, I receive your forgiveness and I receive your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All right, get your offerings ready. Those of you that are giving online, I'm so sure that it is going to be posted for you to see. Please, choir, come and give us there's a song I said you people to give it to us. So please, can you give us that song very sharply as we give? If you are